This is gonna be a classic do an interesting integral video. And the integral I wanna look at here is the integral from zero to pi over two of the natural log of one plus alpha times cosine squared of x dx. So to get us started, I wanna translate this into a double integral first. And in order to do that, I wanna notice that if I take the derivative with respect to y of the natural log of one plus y times cosine squared x, I get, cosine squared x over one plus y times cosine squared x. And so just by the chain rule, this is gonna go downstairs and then the derivative of this thing with respect to y is just cosine squared of x. So what that allows me to do is to rewrite this as the integral from zero to pi over two and then the integral from zero to alpha of cosine squared x over one plus y cosine squared x dy dx. And that's because if I take the antiderivative of this with respect to y, plug in alpha, I get this. But then if I take the antiderivative of this, this with respect to y and plug in zero, I get natural log of one, which is zero. So this works out. Now the next thing that I want to do is change the order of integration. So that's going to allow me to rewrite this as the integral from 0 to alpha, the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of cosine squared x over 1 plus y cosine squared x dx dy. So now we want to focus on doing that inner integral. And so that's going to rely on a couple of tricks. The first thing that we'll do is divide out a cosine in the numerator and the denominator. So I'm going to take this numerator, I'm going to multiply by 1 over cosine squared. I'm going to take this denominator, I'm going to multiply by 1 over cosine squared. So let's see what that does for us. That's going to give us the integral from 0 to alpha, the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of 1 is now in the numerator, and now we're going to have y plus secant squared of x dx dy. So remember that 1 over cosine squared is secant squared, so that's what we're getting when we hit this 1. And then notice that's going to cancel with this y term right here. Now the next thing that I want to do is take the secant squared and write it as 1 plus tangent squared. So let's recall that secant is equal to 1 plus tangent. Secant squared is 1 plus tangent squared. So that means we can write this as the integral from 0 to alpha, the integral from 0 to pi halves, 1 over y plus 1 plus tangent squared x, now we have dx dy. Okay, so now we're at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and make a u substitution. So I will let u equal tangent of x, and let's see what that does. So if u equals tan x, that's gonna make um, x equal the arctan of u, in other words, the inverse tangent, that's gonna make dx equal one over one plus u squared du. Great, so notice we have our dx term here, and then this thing right here is going to become u squared because it's tangent squared. So let's see what that does to our integral. So following this equality up there, we'll have the integral from zero to alpha, and then the integral from, we need to figure out some u bounds, and we'll do that just in a second. And now we have one over y plus one plus u squared. So that's what we get from this. And then we get a one over one plus u squared from this dx. So I'll just put that down here, one plus u squared. And then I have du dy. So now I need to first of all figure out my bounds of integration and then take the antiderivative with respect to u and plug those in. So let's see what we've got. If x is equal to zero, then tangent of zero is equal to zero, so we get u is equal to zero. Great, then next, if x is approaching pi over two, but it's approaching pi over two from below, then tangent of x is approaching infinity, in other words, plus infinity. Great, because tan has a asymptote there, a vertical asymptote there. Okay, so now we've got that going on. Now we can look at this and notice that it's a rational function, so we probably want to use partial fraction decomposition. So let's get to that. We want to take one over y plus one plus u squared times one plus u squared. 
and rewrite that as AU plus B over Y plus one plus U squared plus CU plus D over um, one plus U squared. So in other words, we need to find A, B, C, and D. So we'll do our standard methods of partial fraction decomposition. In other words, we'll take this big equation and we'll multiply by this denominator over here in order to cancel everything out. That means we'll multiply by one, y plus 1 plus u squared times 1 plus u squared. So let's see what that gives us. On the left-hand side, we're just canceled all the way down to 1. And then on the right-hand side, we have AU plus B times 1 plus U squared. So that's what we get from taking this and distributing it onto this term. And then from taking this and distributing it onto this term, we're going to get CU plus D times Y plus 1 plus U squared. Okay. So now what I want to do is notice that this is a cubic polynomial on the right-hand side, but it's just a constant on the left-hand side. That means our coefficient of u, u squared, and u cubed has to be 0, and then the constant has to be 1. So let's go ahead and multiply this out. So I'm going to do it the following way. So we have 1 equals. So let's see what our u cubed term is. So there are two ways to get u cubed by multiplying a u to u squared and c u to u squared. So we have a plus c. So that's, that's how we get u cubed. And then what's our u squared term? So we can get u squared with b times u squared or d times u squared. So that's going to be b plus d. Now let's see what our constant term is. So we have, now let's see what our linear term is. In other words, the one that is the coefficient of u. So we have au times 1. So we have a plus cu times y plus 1. So that's going to be c times 1 plus y. Great. And so that is our coefficient of u. And then our constant is pretty similar. We have b times 1 and d times y plus 1. So we have b plus d times y plus 1. Great. And um, using the strategy that I just outlined, we know that this coefficient has to be 0 because there's no u cubes over here. This one has to be 0. This one has to be 0. And then this coefficient has to be 1. So that gives us a system of four equations and four unknowns, but notice it's slightly decoupled already. It's really two systems of two equations and two unknowns. We've got this thing which is like, this should have been a plus c. So we've got this one, which is a plus c equals 0, along with a plus c times 1 plus y equals 0. So it's pretty easy to solve that system of equations and see that the solution is given by a equals c equals 0. So that's good. We have a handle on what a and c are. They just cancel these two terms out. Now let's see what happens for the rest of it. So we're going to have b plus d equals 0, again, because there's no u squared terms over here. And then b plus d times y plus 1 equals 1, because that's the constant over here. So let's see what we can do with that. So maybe we'll notice that this equation right here can be used to write d equals negative b then we can go ahead and take that and substitute it into this equation, and we get b minus b times y plus 1 equals 1. But that's going to be the same thing as minus b times y equals 1, which tells us that b equals negative 1 over y. And then the fact that d is negative b tells us that d is equal to 1 over y. So that's good. Those are our remaining two coefficients. So I can go ahead and rewrite. So this, this one is equal to negative 1 over y, and then this one is equal to 1 over y. OK, great. So I'll go ahead and clean up the board, and I will put the results of this partial fraction decomposition into this integral up here. Okay, so I put the results from our partial fraction decomposition into this integral. So I've got the integral 0 to alpha, 0 to infinity of 1 over y times the quantity 1 over 1 plus u squared minus 1 over 1 plus y plus u squared, a u integral first and then a y integral second.
So these are actually pretty standard U integrals. So let's just recall that this is going to be the integral from zero to alpha, and then we'll have one over Y. This one is going to be the inverse tangent, so I'll write arctan of U. We need to evaluate that from zero to infinity. Really, we're taking a limit here, but you know that's kind of okay. And then we're going to subtract from that one over the square root of one plus Y times the arctan of u over the square root of 1 plus y. So that's another formula if you have something in there with the u squared other than 1. And now we're going to evaluate this from 0 to infinity. And then finally, we'll do our y integral after all of that is done. So now arctan of 0 is 0. Arctan of infinity or that limit is pi over 2. So this thing is going to go down to pi over 2. And then the same thing happens with this. Arctan of 0 is 0, and then as u tends to, towards infinity, this argument tends toward infinity. So this goes to pi halves as well. So I can go ahead and take that pi halves out of the integral. I have pi halves, now the integral from 0 to alpha of 1 over alpha. And then now notice I have 1 minus 1 over 1 plus y. That's underneath a square root dy. Now the next thing that I want to do is do a substitution for uh, the square root of 1 plus y. So I'm going to go ahead and let t equal the square root of 1 plus y. So that means y is going to be t squared minus 1, which tells us that dy is 2t dt. So let's also notice that when y is equal to 0, that means t is equal to 1. And when y is equal to alpha, that means t is equal to the square root of 1 plus alpha. So that's pretty easy to see. OK, great. So this is everything that we need for this substitution. So that's going to transform this thing into pi over 2 times the integral from 1 to the square root of 1 plus alpha, because now we're in this t world. And now we have 1 over y, which is 1 over t squared minus 1. So that's outside of everything. So we have t squared minus 1 in there. And now we're going to have 1 minus, so that becomes 1 over t. And then our dt is 2t. And then our dy is 2t dt. So I'm going to take that 2 and let it cancel this. I'm going to put the t here. And then I've got dt. Great. So all of those parts came from slightly different places, but um, I think it's not too bad. Now let's notice now that we're going to have pi times the integral from 1 to the square root of 1 plus alpha. And notice we can take this t and multiply it through. That's going to give us a t minus 1. So we have t minus 1, and that's kind of in the numerator. And then notice that this denominator can factor t minus 1 times t plus 1. So luckily enough, this t minus 1 and this t minus 1 cancels. And we're left with just 1 over t plus 1 dt. But that's a pretty simple integral. Now we have pi times the natural log of t plus 1. We're going to evaluate that from 1 to the square root of 1 plus alpha. So in the end, we're going to have pi. And now we have the natural log of square root of 1 plus alpha plus 1. So let's see, square root of 1 plus alpha plus 1 minus the natural log of 2, but now we can put those together into a single natural log using natural log rules. So our final solution is this integral over here is equal to this thing over here. So we have pi natural log of the square root of 1 plus alpha plus 1 over 2. And that finishes this video.